I think anybody can be of suicidal tendency. It depends on I've been feeling how far life pushes you. Purposeless. And how well you can handle suicidal it. Suicidal and negative. It's it's almost like juggling balls. And some people can juggle the balls ten times. I just had in the back and of my some mind. Two hundred. There used to be a lady called Indira. My name is Dr. Indira Patel. I work with subtle energy acupuncture. I work with a person and their needs, and I try my best to give them the help that would suit them. Depression and suicidal conditions, they don't just happen overnight. It's a gradual build-up that seeps into your life, and as they go on, they just get buried under it, and they just can't see a way out. It's because you have lost value and meaning and purpose in just being. There could be many factors. It's not never ever just one factor. Uh, it could be the environment they were brought up in, stressful situations, anxiety, fear. All those negative emotions are, you know, just eating away like rust eats away the iron. And there's nobody really either believing them or supporting them, but they've lived that life for so many years that their self-respect, self-confidence, self-esteem would be gone. You become so dependent on people, and yet when people marry or move on and they leave you, you've got to fend for yourself. And not having that inner core belief that you are a strong human being and you can face the challenges, you give your power away to people like that, and then it comes to bite you. And it literally has robbed them of their life, that they cannot enjoy anything in life, they can't see beauty in it. It's filled me with fear of getting on a train, driving a car, and these are all the activities I used to be able to do before. And it's definitely, definitely affected my ability to learn something new and go forward. And that's when you get this idea that Maybe if I kill myself, I'll put myself out of this misery. A lot of the times, the friends and family who don't understand it and are fearful themselves walk away or try and shun them or stay away from them. Nobody's kind. But you try and tell them that I'm not happy and I'm depressed and they go, why are you depressed? You've got everything. Find something to do. And this is what I'm trying to heal with Indira, is to find that being that has self-value or had self-value. So the first thing I have to do is uh, teach them to relax and breathe. You've got to be very patient to do it. I would like to get down to the bottom of who the real person I am. What is, what is common is we're dealing with a human being. And a human being is not just muscles and bones and blood. Okay, human being, people don't realize it, is more of a, a ball of energy and a lot of the energy is invisible. It's like, uh, you know, the dog that can hear the dog whistle. And so when I work with a person, I'm working to balance that as well as the physical. So I'm working with the invisible and the visible. And that's where the energy field comes into it. Uh, often it could be uh, a blockage of energy that the person's life has created. You know, the way the blood flows uh, from the heart to the lung, gets the oxygen, comes back to the heart and then goes to the body. Okay, the, the way the energies flow, they create a circulation. The same way, if there's a blockage, then it blocks any energies rising or going down. It's that flow that you have to balance out. And when you see a very, very depressed and suicidal person, all these layers are completely jammed up. 
and energy flows are literally complicated. You've got acupuncture points and you've got uh, little energy points, but they're all dif uh, slightly in different ways, different positions, and you've got to connect them up. So I use my fingers to connect them by touch. It's almost like if you wanted a connection, you'd put two ends of a wire onto two points to make the electricity pass through. And it's, it's being like a battery in between and the information from my hands go back and forth to each other plus the person's own field and, and, and I can feel the energy shifting and changing as it works. It's, most of it is uh, mind, thoughts, how they feel, how they think, what's happening in their mind. It's a very, very restless, uh, upset, negative mind. It's almost like a computer and the brain is a hard disk. So if you want to s change or help the person with their issues, you literally got to go in that hard disk and change the software or change the program. Uh, it's like, you know, when you get a pain, if I've got the pain in the elbow, they'll say, okay, fine, treat your elbow. That's, that's the usual thing. But really, the brain is saying, something's wrong. Somewhere, find out. For that reason, when they say their symptoms and issues, I have to locate where it is in their brain. And when I work with the feet, it takes me there. It's almost telling me how the person is changing. And it also tells me what I should do for that particular treatment session. Now, it's almost like a pendulum work. Well, in, in that, they use a pendulum to work out what would be the best thing for a person for treatment. You hold a pendulum in the body field of the person, or you, you hold the pendulum with the thought of them in your mind. Have you ever seen when a woman is pregnant and they say, hold the pendulum and it will tell you the sex of the child? It circles in clockwise and anti-clockwise. So one is yes and one is no. So between the two feet, I am asking questions and it's telling me what to do. They don't go clockwise or anti-clockwise. They, they, they go long or short or the stiffness in it or flexibility in it changes and the, the, the texture and the feel of it is what I use. So one of the ways I do is I close part of the brain by closing the eyes. It stops using the visionary area of the patient. Then it's easier to locate where the issue is. Same as what I do. By closing my eyes, I can concentrate more. I can focus deep inside. I don't have any visual feedback that would interfere with the work. I get a better connection with the patient's requirement. Isometrics, relaxation, they have to practice. They have to practice uh, all the other walking coordination exercises. And when that flow of energies goes through, it also stimulates your chakra energy. And when those chakras and everything is open, that is when your self-esteem, self-perception, self-confidence, everything starts growing. How they move on is up to them a month, six months, a year, two years, six years. Sometimes people relapse. It's completely dependent on how strong the person is, the support as to the environment, friends, family. To actually meet somebody and express yourself, you've got to have a bond with that person. And you've got to know that that person is doing it for your good and not charging you because it's a career. And not charging you 
because you're desperate. Because when you're as desperate as I am, you would give your left arm to get better. Oh, I wouldn't work for NHS. I wouldn't. The amount of paperwork, red tape, documentation, uh, it just doesn't, it's just not the thing for health and people. It doesn't benefit the patients at all. Whereas really individual people need their individual way of getting better. Um, drugs are supportive, but they're not the route to getting the real answer. It just uh, first state patching up so that they can get on with their life and make And she does things selflessly and for free. And I was just amazed that she is doing it. I still get days. I enjoy talking to every one of my patients. I, I, I consider Indira as a friend. When I'm having moments and crises, I just pick up the phone and call her. Uh, their life, the way they're living, the way what is important to them is their own world. And it's quite fascinating how proud and happy they feel when it's all going well. She doesn't get irritated or upset or impatient. I sympathize with the people who are really suffering, particularly mentally, to the extreme is because I'd call it a lost soul. They're searching for something in life that is not easy to find and they've gone on to a convoluted path and got lost somewhere. Or maybe in their environment it wasn't there or no guidance was there. When the negative thoughts start and they come in, you try and say, even though I feel this way and you tap it out, it isn't going to be forever. Life is important uh, because it's a gift that somebody's been given. For what reason, why, we don't know. And uh, if you're given a gift, particularly such a precious one that nobody can create, uh, I think it's completely invaluable. Uh, life itself, I think, is a journey of learning. and. Uh, it's a lifetime that you can spend learning about who and what you are and what is your position in, the, in this universe or in this world. I have a little more faith because she's so kind. I've never ever feared what if I die. I'm looking forward to the future. The only fear I have is if I leave somebody to suffer when I do die.